In this video, we're taking a look at two of the cheapest available 5G devices on the market. This is the Redmi Note 10 5G versus the Oppo A74 5G. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Like I said, we're looking at two of the most budget smartphones on the device that have 5G support, and we're picking which one may be the better choice for you. Beginning with the unboxing, there really isn't much to talk about here. The process is very straightforward and the same for both, except that the Oppo device comes with its very own included earphones. Let's begin with the overall build quality and the design on both these devices. One thing we can really appreciate is the fact that manufacturers are actually putting in effort to make even their budget mid-range devices look really nice and premium, and you can really see that here. Right out of the box, both these phones look pretty robust in their look and feel. They're slightly on the bigger side, but we're kind of used to that at this point. When it comes to the display, they both come with 6.5 inches Full HD Plus LCD displays that support up to 90 hertz of refresh rate. The Oppo does have LTPS with it, which means you can have variable refresh rates depending on what task or which app you're using currently. The Xiaomi phone does not come with that. Just looking at the displays, both of them side by side, it does seem like the Oppo display is far better than the Redmi display. The Oppo has more saturated colors, the contrast levels are better, and even the viewing angle looks slightly better. The Redmi device looks slightly more washed out compared to the Oppo. Both phones have a punch hole cutout. The Oppo has it on the top left corner with 16 megapixels, while the Xiaomi Redmi comes with an 8 megapixel right in the center of the display with a really small hole, which is pretty nice. They both have USB Type-C charging as well as a 3.5 mm jack. Lastly, at the back, you've got a quad camera setup versus a triple camera setup. On the Oppo phone, you've got a quad camera setup with an ultra wide angle lens, while on the Redmi phone, you do not really have an ultra wide angle lens. Both of them are 48 megapixel cameras, and we're gonna put them to the test later in the video. Now let's move on to the camera performance on both of these devices. Like I said, both come with their very own 48 megapixel cameras, but the performance is quite different. So the Oppo phone on one hand has an ultra wide angle lens, eight megapixel additionally, while the mono camera and the macro camera are also present. While on the Xiaomi phone, you get a 48 megapixel main camera, two megapixel macro and two megapixel depth sensor, and absolutely no ultra wide angle lens. So there's no way to shoot ultra wide, even if you wanted to. On the front camera, the Oppo phone comes with 16 megapixels, while the Xiaomi phone has an 8 megapixel front camera. When it comes to the actual comparison of the images, as you can see, the background blur for both looks very similar when you're shooting with the standard lens. Image performance for both is quite similar, even at most situations. HDR performance on both is also very, very comparable. The Oppo phone obviously does have that ultra wide, so you get more of a reach, while the Xiaomi cannot give you that ultra wide. You're kind of limited to just one lens. When you're looking at the 48 megapixel mode cropping in on the details for both shooting at 48 megapixels at 600 crop it does seem like xiaomi does have a lot more detail than the oppo phone so when it comes to image quality when it comes to the resolution side of things uh the redmi phone definitely performs better in terms of the bokeh when looking at it straight up uh you can see the main camera shooting the oppo phone does seem to have a little better depth of field with a little bit more blur and the portrait mode performance on the oppo phone does seem to be slightly better than that on the xiaomi phone Another thing obviously we're going to look at is the skin tones and how it exposes with the front camera. The Oppo phone does look significantly better than the Xiaomi phone. I felt like the Xiaomi phone kept overexposing in most situations, which was a little bit of a bummer. Now looking at the zoom quality, 5x in zoom on the Oppo phone is possible and it looks really, really nice. While on the Xiaomi phone, if you zoom in digitally, it doesn't look as nice. Now let's move on to the video performance. All right, this is a front camera video recording test. Both are doing 1080p at 30 FPS. From what I can see, the Oppo has a more neutral framing, so it's not more cropped in like the Redmi is. The Redmi is very, very cropped in comparatively, but that's because of the image stabilization. So if I do walk, you can see that the Redmi is far more stable or like a little bit more stable than the Oppo, uh, but it also compromises for that by having it zoomed in way more than the Oppo. But image quality wise, they're pretty similar. It does seem like the Redmi is slightly more overexposed in general. All right, this is a back camera video recording test. And again, as you can see, the Redmi is more cropped in than the Oppo. And then when I'm walking, the Oppo has no stabilization while the Redmi does. That is why it is cropping in a little bit. The stabilization on the Redmi looks really, really good compared to the Oppo. As you can see, it's like not shaking almost at all. Even the sharpness on the Oppo is extremely over sharpened, while the Redmi just looks really, really great. Almost looks like it's on a gimbal. Really, really good shot for that. As you can see, as far as the stability is concerned, the Oppo phone is completely destroyed by Xiaomi's performance. The Xiaomi pretty much looks like it's on a gimbal. And even when I'm running with the phone straight out, you can see that the Redmi phone performs way, way better. Even the exposure control is way better. Both of them also come with a single firing speaker as well. So it's not a stereo speaker. You have just one single source of firing. Oh, 
all of the music you heard in this video is from Sonata. We make videos every single day and looking for non-copyright music that's actually good can be quite a challenge. So we've been trying out Sonata music for the past couple of weeks and I'm pleased to say it's actually pretty good. So you have an easy selection to browse through different types of music based on artists, genres, mood, themes and anything else that you would like to customize. You get a great selection of music because all of this music is made by actual artists who actually care about what they're making. So you can do things like adding them to your wishlist or the songs that you actually like and then download them at a later date and you get full license to use them without any copyright strikes. So if you're looking for good music for your videos as a content creator, check out sonata.media. All the links are in the description. Next, let's take a look at the performance for both devices, how they perform in day-to-day -day tasks as well as gaming. The Oppo phone comes equipped with the Snapdragon 480 5G with an 8 nanometer processor chip, while the Redmi phone comes with the MediaTek Diamond D 700 5G 7 nanometer processor. Both are not really the best, and obviously you won't expect crazy performance out of them, but the MediaTek chip is actually surprisingly really good. Especially the fact that it's a 7 nanometer processor makes it more power efficient, and you can actually use it long term without having battery drain effects and the performance overall was very sustainable for our test period, even with 4 gigs of RAM. The base version of this is the 4 gig. You can get the 8 gram version as well, which performs really, really well. In terms of benchmarking and processing, you can take a look at the scores right here, but honestly, I don't really pay much attention to the benchmarking scores because real world performance matters more. So the optimization and everything on the MediaTek has been done pretty well. Even though we're on a lower RAM version, it performs fairly good and very comparable to the Qualcomm. When it comes to the UI and software, the Oppo comes equipped with its Color OS 11, which is based off of Android 11, while the Xiaomi phone comes with Mi UI 12 based off of Android 11. Now, really, if you're used to the Xiaomi ecosystem, this will feel right at home. Same for the Oppo. If you're used to the Color OS system, it'll feel right at home. And overall, I would definitely give the edge to the Mi UI because that's what I prefer over Color OS, but this is really preferential. Taking a look at the battery on both of these devices, they both come equipped with a 5000 mAh capacity battery with support 18 watts of fast charging. The charging brick is included with both variants. The optimization for the processing power along with the battery usage has been done pretty well on both devices, so you won't be running out of battery very quickly. Storage-wise, both these phones come equipped with a base storage of 128GB and it's expandable via microSD card. The test unit we got for the Redmi device had a 4GB RAM rather than the 8 gigs. So obviously, don't expect this to be the baseline performance. Obviously, if you get the 8 gig RAM, you can expect a lot better performance. Now, when it comes to the price on both of these devices, the Oppo is slightly more expensive at 1,099 ringgit or roughly 18,000 rupees as opposed to the Redmi Note 10 5G, which is priced at about 799 ringgit or 14,500 rupees. So these are just guesstimates of what the prices are going to be. We're going to put the final price in the description below. So all in all, looking at the spec sheet and the performance for them, they're both very, very similar. When it comes to the specs, especially the display seems to be exactly the same. The size seems to be exactly the same. Battery life, exactly the same. Performance, closely exactly the same. The main difference that you see is that the Oppo phone has six gigs of RAM, while the Redmi has only four gigs of RAM. But performance is very comparable. The biggest difference that we're gonna see is in the camera performance. As you guys already saw from the camera comparison we did earlier, the Redmi phone shines a lot more when it comes to the video features and the video aspect. Sure, it does crop in a little bit more and you don't have the ultra wide angle lens, but the stabilization really compensates for whatever it's lacking. The stabilization is just significantly better than Oppo. Oppo has pretty much no stabilization. When it comes to the image performance, however, Oppo does outperform the Redmi phone in pretty much every aspect. When you look at the HDR performance, the Oppo phone looks better. When it comes to the different versatility with the different lenses, the Oppo phone also looks better. Redmi does have the advantage in the video aspect, while Oppo has the image advantage. Now when it comes to picking between the two devices, which one should you be picking? Honestly, if you're looking just for a 5G future-proof device, either of this is gonna be okay. If you're used to the Xiaomi devices and the MIUI, then the Xiaomi phone's great for you. And if you wanna focus more on the video-taking aspect, I definitely recommend the Xiaomi over the Oppo. However, if you want more versatility, you need an ultra wide angle lens, you need to be able to zoom into at least five times, then the Oppo is a clear winner when it comes to image taking. And if you're okay with the color OS as well, it's a great phone. So all in all, both great devices, you won't go wrong picking either. If you want to pick the cheaper one, go for the Redmi. And if you don't really care about video taking capabilities and want to spend a little bit more for better camera performance in the images, go for the Oppo. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again in the next one.